my life. Nobody did do me right. And I won't take it like what the fuck you say? Yeah, I know I fucked your bestie mistakenly. Now I know you are vexing. But this money I'm flexing. It's only you I want to spend her with me. Baby girl, I swear I just want you to do what's best for the team. My baby, stop the car. Let me tell you straight up. Maybe we're in this to it. Listen, his name is Michael Owusu, aka Sakodia, and that's the latest one from him featuring Ruga. I love this particular one so much. Goodness me. Anyways, welcome back to the show, AM Club on MS24 TV. We are live. My name is Godwin Nambo. It's time for a lifestyle daily. My brother has joined me in studio. We are discussing levels of success in entrepreneurship. Now, for some, some people, including myself, when we start something, we just wanted to succeed immediately, immediately. <laughs> but uh, what are the levels of success in entrepreneurship? Echo will be teaching us more about that. Um, before I go to him, my good friends at Top Choco says, the Top Choco 3-in-1 Instant Mixed Chocolate Drink is suitable for preparing both cold chocolate milkshakes and caps of delicious hot chocolate. Just add hot water. Introducing the latest addition to the Top Choco family is the Top Choco Choco Cup, which is suitable for everyone and will surely be a crowd pleaser. Children can take it to the school and imagine serving these cups at birthday parties, picnics, or any other gathering. This chocolatey treat will definitely make their day. Get your hands on the Top Choco Choco Cup today and experience the joy of chocolate spread in a cup. Remember, Top Choco is made with love in Ghana using only the finest ingredients. Top Choco, it's chocolatey. Now, you know that we like to hear from you as part of the show. Just send us a message on WhatsApp number 055033-1511, and 0204738481. If we open the phone lines, we have some questions for my guest this morning. Please do well to ask, especially if you're an entrepreneur. I commend her, of course, it's no new face to the show. <laughs> he is, of course, the business coach and the CEO of EMI Group Africa. Senior. Thank I'm, you. I'm learning the way of suit from you now. I see, see, yeah, see, see, right see. Now they are saying, Charlie. Today we decided the to way, go suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they like wear suit. It'll be like, I've already decided to wear suit. Oh, I'm a gentleman. I should, I stop misbehaving. It's good to have you. It's good to have you, too. Calm good, morning good. for you. Yeah, very calm morning, rainy morning. It's good. It's good. So it's good to be here. How do you feel when we drag you here early in the morning like this? Are you a morning person? I'm not really. I'm a nocturnal. So, ah. but then whenever I sleep, it doesn't matter the time. I'm up at six. I don't know why. So, the six a.m. club. Exactly. So yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's good to have you. Let's talk about something you love so much: entrepreneurship. Yep. And um, we've had conversations about entrepreneurship over and over and over again, but we can't stop mm. having it because sure. we are ever growing. We're ever evolving. Ah, where do you start from? Let's go to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, I start a business. Yeah. Um, what was the first level of success? Well, so, and I'm happy to be back following our earlier conversation. So, the first level of success is being a student. That is the knowledge level. Okay, and even when you look at life, there's a process of acquiring knowledge where you are investing time into building your, your capacity to know certain things. And that's very fundamental. It goes through all the levels, but then it's particular, particularly important because it is a knowledge that builds your capacity to be able to actually even get into mm. certain sectors, right? Mm. So you start by being a student. The knowledge level, lack of knowledge, and I'm happy you had it <laughs> faster before yes, me. Indeed. Lack of knowledge, you perish. And mm. it's not just perishing in life, but even in business. What you don't know can actually collapse you. your business, right? <laughs> so the first level of entrepreneurial success, as I term it, is where we are a student, we are learning, we are taking in as much as we can, and now that knowledge is everywhere, you don't have an excuse to be ignorant. Mm. You don't have an excuse not to know where the market is going, where business is going, where the sectors uh, are, and the, what is happening. You know, and even knowledge about yourself, knowledge about people, that's why I told you, people is business, right? Mm. 
So learning about people, how to handle them, how to deal with them, and all of that. So the first level is knowledge. Let's stay on the knowledge, shall we? Yes. Um, where do I start from? So I have the, the idea to start, let's say, let me use my business, a popcorn business. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to sell popcorn. Okay. Okay. Um, beyond what, how to make a popcorn, to make it taste good and pricing and all that, what are some of the important things I need to know about that business before I move? Who needs it? Mm. What is your target market? Because like we said earlier, business has to do with sales. No matter how nice your popcorn is, right? If nobody wants it, you don't have a business. You're only doing a hobby because you're happy about it, right? Mm. So start studying who needs this popcorn. What is your target market? Where would you get the most value when you start this popcorn? Do you have to do it brick and mortar where you have structures? Do you have to do it as an e-commerce where you actually are supplying? What kind of flavors will people like? And depending on your target market, if they are kids, you would want to do colorful popcorn. If they are adults, you'd want to do more. If you know it's popcorn that is serving maybe the cinemas or the movies. Yeah. So it, you have to do your market research. Basically, one, who needs it? That's the basic thing. Two, who would fund it if it starts growing, okay. right? And then how do you package? How do you distribute? Just learn before you start putting in investment. Because the moment you put in any experiment you do is cost. And the more you incur cost, the higher the probability of collapsing your business. So before you actually start putting pen to paper, I mean, putting your recipes together and all that, study the markets and find out, is there a sustainable market for this popcorn business? And how do I go about distributing this in a way that I can make money from it? Who has done it before? How did they do it? Who has failed at it? How did they fail? And how do I avoid all the pitfalls? Gather knowledge, because it really will serve you well. I think you partially just answered my next question. <laughs> and in st because st in studying the market, you're not the first person selling this no. popcorn. So you want to know who out there is also selling popcorn. Exactly. And you know it's quite difficult. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, um, it's, 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 it's quite difficult or almost impossible to go to someone and say, hey, I want to do the business you're doing, and mm -hmm. I want to understudy you. I want to know where you failed, where you succeeded, and mm -hmm. all that. You, you hardly can understudy somebody who's doing the same business you're going to get, get mm -hmm. into. So how do, you, how do you study the market in terms of your competitors? The best way to get knowledge about any business is to do it, to work in it. One of the easiest ways of gathering information is go and work there, even if it's for free. People will just give you information if you're willing to help them grow, if you're willing to help them. So imagine go to Popcorn and say, hey, I'm good at marketing. Can I help you? How do you do this? How did you do that? How did you do that? You got the knowledge. You help them, and then you move. It's exchange of value, one. And people like to talk. They just don't like to give information that is proprietary, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't go saying you want to start a Popcorn business. You go saying, wow, this is nice. How did you start? People would volunteer information. We talk. <laughs> people like to talk, especially if they've done it over time, and they would want people to, you know, understand how far they've come and and because we're very religious we always want to attribute it to God and they will tell you the story how they start people mm. would volunteer information without they even knowing, knowing that but it's the way you ask the question that would determine the answer you get After I have asked those questions mm -hmm. or gone to work there and I've gathered my information if they hear that I have started the same business, well it's it's life you don't so are you just you have to shut really yeah, yeah you, it's close your mind the, to the, the the most successful businesses come from people that actually were in that kind of business. And you see as we go through the levels that that is a very important point to, like, if you don't go through the process of doing it, you spend a lot of time trying to experiment and get it right. And all that time spent is money spent as well. Like any time I'm talking to you, I need a pen and a paper. I need to send one of the... <laughs> well, it's recorded. The so <laughs> I want to... I'm, I'm taking notes. Do... I want a pen and a paper right yeah. now. If you go to my car and please give <laughs> me a pen and a paper. I like to write down. So no, first level of success is the knowledge level. The knowledge so level. Knowing yes. about the business, studying the market. Exactly. Knowing who has done it, who has failed at it, who has succeeded, who succeeded at it. Exactly. Also knowing your own product, uh, who wants it. True. Like you said, who's going to fund it. Who's going to fund as, it. As it goes and all that. What's the second level? The second level is skills. Mm. So that is where you acquire the essential skills you need to do the things that you have to do. You know, um, and this level is where we do what we call apprenticeship. Okay. You know, so that's why entrepreneurship is good when you start early. You know, a lot of the entrepreneurs or business people that have succeeded in the world, they started early. You realize that some of them dropped out of school, yeah. they started in the garage yeah. and all that, because you need time to acquire the knowledge. 
and the skills. So that's where apprenticeship comes in. And that's what our educational system really needs, getting people into certain sectors where they apply themselves to acquiring the essential skills they need to be able to do the things they want to do. There is no product or service out there that does not require skills. You know, knowledge is what you know, but the market does not necessarily pay for knowledge. Otherwise, professors would be the richest, mm. right? Mm. The market pays for skills because that is what you know how to do. And your value in the marketplace goes beyond your knowledge to your skills. Why? Because now, even in the world of AI, we don't need people who are knowledgeable. We need people who are skillful. Yeah, cool. So the second level is skills. What skills do you have? And how do you apply the skills in a way that it gives you value in the marketplace? What do you know how to do? Are you the best at it? As long as you are not the best at it, you keep improving until you're the best at it. Because when the, you know, when the iron is sharp, you easily cut the tree, easily. right? Exactly. So with business, you start with the knowledge of the sector, knowledge of yourself, knowledge of people, knowledge of different environments, different economies, da, 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 just study. And then enhance that studies with essential skills of what you know how to do. And that comes from apprenticeship, right? So for instance, the popcorn, you go and you learn by doing. It is the doing that distinguishes you from everybody else, not necessarily just the knowing. Because some people know and they can't do. Mm. So you start with the knowledge, which is a foundation, mm. and then you enhance it with the skills of what you know how to do. Because that's what you apply in the next level of, of, of entrepreneurial success. Right. I guess then it would be right to ask you what the next essential level. skills are there to learn as an entrepreneur, especially in this environment. So there are two types, right? We have the soft skills and we have the, we have the hard technical skills, right? So the hard technical skills are the things we apply in manufacturing, creating recipes and all that. There, there is the hard core of the skills, which has to do with the practical application of your hands, legs and everything that you need to actually do what you know how to do. Mm. But the soft skills is how to deal with people. And that has to do with critical thinking, that has to do with problem solving, that has to do with leadership, that has to do with negotiation. Everything that you have to apply your mind to doing is also a kind of skill that you need to complement with a hard skill to be able to what? Essentially do what you want to do. So we have the hard skills, which are the hard technical skills that you need to start learning and improving on with time. And then we have the soft skills that helps you to enhance your brain capacity and your ability to deal with people. So people management, leadership, how to smile, how to negotiate, how to everything that you need to do that has to do with another person has to come under the skills, uh, the soft skills, and everything that you need to do that has to do with producing the products or the service or all that comes under the hard technical skills. So those are the two types of skills that everybody needs to start, you know, building and improving on. And a lot of the time we are good at the technical skills, but we fail at the soft skills. And that's why a lot of the time, even though you see a good business that has a good product, the soft skills is missing so that they are unable to maintain the good people that would grow the business. Interesting. So with the soft skills, I can understand the hard skills because mm -hmm. for the hard skills, like you said, apprenticeship comes into, yes. into play. So you can understudy somebody, you can work there, learn, oh, this is what they put into their popcorn mm -hmm. to make it very nice. Oh, it's too sugary, so mm -hmm. maybe I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But the soft skills, you also can't... You, look, you can watch a number of videos on, mm -hmm. on YouTube about how to talk to people, mm -hmm. but then until you practically um, deal with people, mm -hmm. Can you say that you've acquired these soft skills? Well, you can learn how to smile on YouTube, right? And then you just keep practicing until you have a, a, a power smile. So, so you, can, you, you can you can learn how to shake smiling. hands, you can <laughs> learn how to think, you can learn how to... But then even in the apprenticeship, mm. when you see whoever you are learning from behaving in a certain way, there are two things. Either I'm going to take this or I'm going to drop this. What can I learn? to do and what can I learn to avoid to do? And those are part of the soft skills. So for instance, the person is good at doing the popcorn, but then they shout. And then when they shout, how does that make you feel? Remember mm. what I said the last time? People will forget what you did and sometimes what you said, but they never forget how mm. you made them feel. feel. So then you would learn that as well as learning the hard skills on how the person is dealing with customers, how the person is dealing with their employees, how the person is dealing with their own family members. You will learn things. And then you do that through observation mm. and through encounter, mm. right? So then you pick up some of these skills, learning how others are doing it. You always have to uh, be the one running the show. Do you always have to be the one knowing these things, learning the hard skills and the soft skills? Or you could just hire the right people to do it for you. So you see, when we talk about business, business takes after 
whoever is doing it, all right? So if, if you want your business to succeed, there are some fundamentals that you can't outsource, right? Because business literally takes after whoever is running it. If the person is disciplined, you remember that when they get into the, the business, the business will be a disciplined business. When the, bus the, the person is structured, when, when you get into the business, you realize that it would be a structured business. When you get into a, a business that the, the leader is haphazard, you realize that the business will be haphazard because everything essentially rises and falls on leadership. So it is important that regardless of whatever you can even outsource, you as a business owner needs to know certain things that would help you grow your business. So yeah, you might outsource everything technical, you might outsource leadership or whatever, but one thing you can't outsource is you and what you're bringing on board to build the culture of your business that would ensure the growth of that business, unless you're not the one running. And when we get to the seventh level of entrepreneurial success, you see that it might depend on you, but not necessarily. Oh, so we're going all the way to seven. Yeah, there are seven levels. So. Beautiful. I was going to yeah. ask you where profits, <laughs> profits comes in. <laughs> I've seen knowledge, I've seen skills. No, I'm all already, the seven I'm enhances your profits. All right. the seven. So, yeah, so when we go through it, maybe when we finish that, we can just break it up and then you see well, the what I'm are about. different levels, aren't they? So at the knowledge yeah. level, certainly profit is not coming in like that. Well, is it? so that's where you invest your time to be able to acquire and build your value. You see, you are paid for your value in the marketplace. So that's why entrepreneurship is not just about starting a business. Mm. You as a person, you need to know what your value is. And that comes from your knowledge and skills because everybody needs to know how much their one hour costs. And that's why people don't, you see, the thing that rich people don't have is time. And that should, that is what should inform everybody that the most valuable asset everybody has is time. But time in itself is not as, as valuable as compared to the knowledge and the skills that you bring to the marketplace, that actually attributes to you the value that people pay you in exchange for. You get it? So it's not just like you get up and do anything that you want, but you need to know, okay, what skills and uh, knowledge am I building that it would give me so much value that my one hour can be paid? You know, Bill Gates' one hour is like $23,000. Tell me about it. One hour. And whatever value you want to get in this life comes from the exchange of that time with your knowledge and the skills. So if you want to be a billionaire, right, and you get to maybe age 40 and you're not a billionaire, you probably had a billion handed down to you, but you didn't know what knowledge and skills and where to apply them in a way to actually translate that one billion worth time into cash. Because time, just like cash, is measured in numbers and words. So 10 o'clock can be written as 10, one, zero, one, one, uh, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. And 10 million is also 10, zero, zero, zero. zero, zero. So it's literally what do you need to convert your time into the money you're looking for? Because time is a God factor that is freely given to everybody the same measure. Money is a man-made that you need the time, knowledge, and skills to translate and get that. Oof. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we are learning so much this morning. We're on point three. Okay, the third, uh, the third thing to know, level of success? Exposure. Exposure, exposure. So, so, so the, the challenge really for a lot of people that are struggling in business is that there are certain places you haven't entered yet. Mm. There are certain things you don't know yet. And there are the, the certain knowledge that you've not been exposed to yet, right? Um, when you're born in a rich family, one of the things you don't necessarily regard is money. Mm -hmm. When you're born in a poor family, one of the things that you spend your life looking for is money. money. So essentially, what you're exposed to informs even the kind of business that you would build. When you grow up in a tech environment, it is most likely that you would eventually end up with a tech business. When you grow up in a legal family or a family that is full of lawyers and judges, it's most likely that you would also grow up to be like that. Because essentially the things we're exposed to, and that's why it's good for us parents to take our kids to good schools. Because in that environment, they are going to be exposed to certain things that would inform their mindset. So a lot of us are not even familiar with big money. So we can't talk big talk. If I gave somebody a million right now, they can't walk from here to the junction and not collapse. Why? Because they are not exposed to big money. If you want to grow big business, you need to be exposed to big business. And that's why there's a need to do what we call internship. 
So we have gotten to the internship level. Internship gives you exposure. If you want to build a big organization and you've never had an internship in a big organization, how do you intend to do that? You need to go into the big organization to get the exposure you need to be able to inform the way you think. People say big dreams. Dream big dreams. If your dreams don't scare you, it means that you're not Most, dreaming big yeah. enough and all that. You know, when they talk about that, most of them are referring to fantasies, where you sit down and think, Charlie, if I had a private jet, mm -hmm. this would be good. If I had a... My brother, listen, you don't even know where to buy a private jet. You've never ever been exposed... Come to think of it. Yeah, you don't, you, you've never been exposed to an environment where private jet discussion is normal. Why That's do you true. think we have an East it's, it's Legon Executive Club? Those guys are being exposed to certain things that would inform the way they do business for the rest of their lives. So if you would pay $10,000 to be in a club like that, I would advise that you save towards getting into that club. Because that one encounter with somebody in there would completely change your life. And that's the third level, exposure. And a lot of us don't have enough of it. That's why when they get to the fourth level, they exert so much energy and get so much little results. This is very interesting, Echo, that you mentioned. Um, exposure in this case is different from the apprenticeship we, you mentioned oh, earlier yes. uh, in the first and second. That's a knowledge and a skills because exactly. you're still learning. Um, this one is a deliberate um, attempt to go in there to gather, exactly. learn, glean. To, to, to go in there and shape the way you think. Okay. That is really... Because the way you think informs how you do things. So it's not so much about... Like the first one, the knowledge and skills mm -hmm. where you are acquiring knowledge of your product, the market, and all that, um, and the skills where you are acquiring, like you said, hard and soft skills. This is more about your networking, mind, your yes. mindset, so and networking. the things that inform your mind, the, how you think, and the people that you find yourself around. Mm. It's, I mean, these levels are not necessarily um, exclusive of each other; they run through. Okay. Because at the point of acquiring knowledge, you can also be exposed to certain things, right? right? At the point of acquiring skills, you also be exposed to certain things. But this third level is an intentional attempt to get around certain people, certain knowledge, certain um, um, success that informs. You know, recently I started a consulting uh, with an IT firm, mm. right? And in getting into that company, I realized that. This thing called a bulk SMS. Mm -hmm. That service, it's a very, very lucrative service. But it's not just lucrative because you have that service and you're providing to people. You need to be intentional about getting corporates on board because one corporate account can actually form 80% of your total revenue. Wow. And how would you know that if you're not exposed to that that's information? So you see? So, and that's why we advise young people to do internships. And people are now going around saying, pay me for this, pay me for that, and all that. You want to do internship where you're getting exposed and you want to be paid for that. That is a lack of knowledge about the importance of exposure. And a lot of people don't know. We don't teach it. Most lecturers don't know it. All right? And that's why some of us have made it a point to teach people that exposure is an investment of time in enhancing your value in the marketplace. That's the third level. Uncle, please drink some water. <laughs> drink some water for me because what you just no, said. There's so much fundamentals that we have failed to know and as such we don't live by and that's why most of us are really struggling you know mm -hmm. but eventually i'm sure on these platforms you'll be able yeah. to help i'm hearing young people <laughs> talk about the fact that when you're doing internship they are sending them to go and buy plantain and yeah go and buy and they are not happy about it so yeah they are working for free yeah but they don't know that but whose it, favorite basket are you building yours indeed. Because the more you do that for him, the more he feels he owes you. Mm -hmm. And when there's an opportunity, he's going to recommend you. Absolutely. And that recommendation can actually save you 10 years of, of wasting your life. Yes. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of people don't know. Let's stay on exposure a bit. I yeah. think we have a bit of time. Mm -hmm. um, networking and all that. Um, <laughs> cut your coat according to your size. <laughs> yeah. you Certainly, this coat we are cutting is not to our size. Yes. If, if I want to run a popcorn business mm -hmm. and I want, to, I want to play in the big leagues where... Um, I'm selling as much as KFC is selling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then I need to get in there where the KFC people meet and have exactly. their conversation and mm -hmm. all that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, these practical examples, mm -hmm. which places would you recommend or advise that we enter to mm -hmm. learn these things and connect ourselves? Okay, so first of all, everybody has fundamental interests that they they're born with. Everything, mm -hmm. like they say, what is your talent? What is your gift? What are the things that you... You, you like, you know, and, and that's why I always advise people to start with their hobbies, you know, because these things are powered by passion and interest. 
So there are things you like. For instance, if you like media, get into the media. Work for free if you have to uh, provide support for them and all those things. And then help them to be able to get to a certain place where your contribution would be attributed to the value that you, you provide, right? So essentially, everybody that wants a level of exposure exchanges time in a form of investment. One day I'll teach time. A lot of people talk about time management, but mm. the truth is you can't manage something you can't control, mm. right? Mm. If I'm moving this bottle from here to here and I say, no, stay here, don't move, I'm managing it, yeah. right? If I don't want to drink everything, I drink a little, I leave it, when I come back, shouldn't it be the same? Same thing. Can you do that to time? Absolutely Whether not. you use it or not. It's moving. So why do we have time management? Right? There are three things you do with time. You invest it in exchange for building your value in the marketplace. You use it in exchange for getting results. Or you waste it because you can't account for the use of it. And a lot of us are wasting it. We have 12 hours, active hours. We have 24 hours free giving in a day. The challenge is we can't account for those 24 hours. And even where we can, we can't say what value we can attach to that 24 hours. You're rich not because of what you're doing, you're rich because of the value of your time. Right. If I ask you to come and then I have an amount in my head to give you, and I think in my head that that amount is good for you and you accept it, you've, you, what you've done is you've told me what the value of your time is. If someone can let you sit down for three hours and pay you 300 cities and you say thank you, you are even happy for it. What you've done is your three hours is worth 300 cities. And that's what it is. A lot of people don't know these things, right? So then, at the end of the day, what sector you end up in, one, is informed by your interest, what you have in mind to do with your life, what skill sets you have, and probably what you went to learn in school. Okay. If you want to build a big business, look at every sector has top three. Every sector, mm. everywhere in the world. In Ghana, if you want to do manufacturing, pay attention to the top three. If you want to do legal, pay attention to the top three. There's always the top three, right? Okay. And then when you look at the top three, what you look at is, okay, what knowledge do I have? What skills do I have? And who can I serve with those mm. to be able to get the exposure I need? need? Because in these three levels, your focus is not really making money. Mm. Your focus is building your capacity to serve in a way that is attributed to your value in the marketplace. Because it is only in service that you build network. <laughs> Okay, because of our time, <laughs> we're going to rush through this because I know there's a lot more in there that, that you want to pour into us. Okay. So much you want to pour into us. And what you just said is not about big businesses, even for small even businesses. Even for small, small, I mean, yeah, okay. you can start from there, yeah. What's the fourth level? So the fourth level is what we call in the... Fact, give us, give, it, the, give it to us. Levels, give, right? us give us all okay, the levels so, so that we see what so we can So the touch fourth on. level is what we call the laborer level. Laborer. That is where you exert yourself to be able to what? Work. <laughs> through the application of your knowledge and skills. Mm. A lot of the times when people leave school and they do their national service and then get into entry level, so that's the entry level and all that, you exert yourself to getting paid. So you know the labor, laborers have to work and get, get paid. paid. Yeah. And a lot of us, when we start from that, that's where we apply ourselves and we are sweating and we are tired and we are exhausted. And a lot of people, when they go into business, right, they start entrepreneurship, they think it depends on them. Mm. At that point, you're at the labor level. Because in your mind, if you're not there, nothing will go. That's what laborers are. If the laborer is not there to carry the concrete, they don't get paid, right? So the, the level of labor is where people exert themselves. And that's where you get things like, oh, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, there's nobody helping me, I'm doing all this thing by myself. And it's a mindset where you think that everything depends on you for it to happen. But it's also a stage, okay. right? Everybody has to go through the labor stage. You did, where you work more than you're paid. Yes, indeed. Right? Yes. Not necessarily because you don't deserve it, but you're not there yet. Because without your input, you wouldn't get a certain output. There are people that don't have to even appear, they still get paid. Dear Gen Z's, you have a missed call here. <laughs> you have a missed call. No, it's true. People, they, they, they don't know that there's that labor level where you exert your skills and energy into building your value in whatever sector you want to mm. go into, 
right? So the startup, when people start businesses, they are the liberal side, right? They have to invest their time and energy. And sometimes you don't have money, but it's okay because you are, when you are present and you are applying your skills, you get paid for that. Your customers will pay you. So you start a small cake business and then you are doing the cake by yourself. You get here. Yeah, and then the more you do the cake, the more money you make. So in the labor side, the more you do something, the more money you make, right? The next one is engineer level. Engineer. This is where you put in the structures and systems for growth. At the, lib at the labor side, you're putting in time, energy, skills, knowledge for money for outputs, right? But the engineer, this is where you've done the labor well, but now you're putting in structures and systems to build a certain culture of productivity in your office, in mm. your business, mm. right? Yeah. So for instance, with the, 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 popcorn? the popcorn, you know how to do the popcorn, you know how to package, you've done your research, you, your, 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 your product is one of the best, but now you need to build processes and systems, right? Because success in business comes from repetitiveness of a structured process. Mm. And that's why in big business, you don't go and do whatever you like. There's a system in place that everybody is must cons follow. Yeah. You consistently, and I shared that the last time, yeah. every, big, every big business is powered by a repetition of a structured process right. done every day. So if you are at the introvert side, you'll be okay. If you are the extrovert, you'll be very bored mm. because it's the same thing. That's why you hear a lot of people say, I'm bored at work, I do the same thing. All that. You want to go keep changing? No. At the engineer side, is building the processes and systems and structures to ensure consistent growth and expansion of your business. Beautiful. Right? Yes. Now, the next one is the architect side. And this is where <laughs> big dreams come to life. Mm. Right? A lot of people have big dreams without building the foundation of knowledge, skills, exposure, yeah. labor. They haven't yeah. served anyone, and then they haven't built any system, but they have big dreams. It's not just about big dreams. And that's why a lot of us are driven by faith and church. And I don't want to take a swipe at church and everything, but a lot of people believe God should do the work for them. And that's why we spend more time doing the things that we are supposed to be doing in church when we have to actually be doing in learning, building the skills, because everything we need for life and livelihood is already given. And if we, if we understand those things, we realize that this mind and the time that God has given us are two invaluable like, assets that we cannot afford to waste. And that's the saddest thing in life to waste your mind and your time when you know that those are the two things you've been freely giving in exchange for every man-made thing that you need. Everybody is in pursuit of man-made things, forgetting that God has already given you two main things, your mind and time, that you need to build because those are raw materials, right? And you need to enhance those raw materials into products and services that now you can exchange for the things that you want. So the architect side is driven by vision. That is where people are called visionaries, right? They are able to craft the image of where we are going, not necessarily where we are, and inspire people to drive their, their outputs towards where we are going. So when you go into companies and churches that have vision, you see that they've articulated the vision on what we call a vision board, or sometimes they even have a drawing of the auditorium they want to build, because they want to inspire people's giving towards the vision and not necessarily where they are. Architect. And being an architect as an entrepreneur, and these are names that I'm using as placeholders, right? But being an architect is being able to conceptualize exactly. There's, there's a certain level of envious clarity mm. with where you're going that eventually becomes admirable enough for people to want to invest their time, effort, and money into your business. So there's a buy-in of your vision that others are now investing so you see, when you get into a business that is really growing, driven by an architect, a lot of people are not working there because of the money. They're working there because they've bought into the vision and they want to be part of that. Oof. And the last Final one stage. I need this video. is investor In stage. Investor, investor stage. Investor stage. And this okay, is that's where the last one. this is where you don't necessarily apply your energies anymore. This is where your money works for you. You see, the essence of entrepreneurial or business success is to wear yourself out of the business, not wear yourself in the business. And this is a point that I want everybody to note. You are successful in business when you're not needed in your business anymore. You're successful in business when you've been able to build the systems and structures that makes you redundant. 
But what do you see in most African businesses? You work till you die in the business. And they think that's an achievement. That is not. There's a reason why Richard Branson has so many businesses. Why? Because he's built a model that does not depend on him to succeed. And there's a reason why, despite as successful as he is, because he doesn't work in the business. His money works in the business. Because at the moment, when you invest in somebody's business, now you've literally employed them to make you money. And that's the highest level of entrepreneurship, where you evolve from working yourself out of the business. So you remember, in the UT days, mm -hmm. he was able to resign as a CEO of the company. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's built the systems and structures, he's already driven the vision of where they're going, and he's handed over. The only problem is that maybe the structures and systems were not robust enough, or he couldn't find other investors to put in enough money. We don't know, but research will show. But these are the seven levels, and if anybody dedicates <coughs> themselves to these seven levels, it, it will be almost impossible for them to fail. You just tuned in, you've missed the class <laughs> session, but we are kind enough to put it on our YouTube for you. We've been talking to Echo Mensa. He's taught us knowledge, skills, and exposure, labor, engineer, architect, and the investor level. These are the seven levels of success, according to the Bible <laughs> of Echo Mensa. Man, we always love having you. Thank, Thank you, you so much.